Antichrist! A lot of pressure? Nah. <laughs> like I was, was going to say, it's just us. Like I was telling Chris and when a couple I was coming thousand over people. here, <laughs> nothing I enjoy more than talking about me, so we're, we're okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we're all in the same boat then. I haven't been out in a while, so I'm out, I'm out and I get to talk about me. This is great. <laughs> well, it's Sunday, December 9th, 2018. This is the Bulldog Unchained Podcast. I'm your host, the King of Villains, Bulldog Malenko. Joining me as per usual, Tucker. What up? Nubsy. It's your boy, boy. And our special guest host this week, comedian Big John Richardson. What's going on, brother? Hey, how's everybody today? Wonderful. Wonderful. So, Big John, <clears throat> how long have you been doing comedy? Oh, um, we'll say two decades. Damn. I've been doing it professionally for about 10 years, but I've been doing open mics since 1997. Holy shit. See, I've seen you several times and uh I love that uh I love that you run sort of a clean show. It, it used to with be, the undertones <laughs> it's just, it's kind of a backhanded clean show see that that's that's what I like to do I like to go to the line and then let you go across that's not <laughs> right. my fault I didn't say anything but you went there that's that's the best way to do it exactly yeah the uh the audience's laughter like just that eruption is what sets the joke off and you're like oh, I'm I was talking about this. I don't know what you people are laughing about. You filthy. <laughs> You're yep. probably going to hell. <laughs> so let me ask you this. We're going to cut to the chase here. So on this show, it usually derails quickly. Mm -hmm. And we just spin off in all kinds of madness. But speaking of madness, this week, <clears throat> it's been getting bad for the past few years. But this week, this shitstorm of political correctness is just ramping the fuck up and it is pissing a lot of real people off have you seen the uh like the baby it's cold outside and rudolph the red-nosed reindeer i heard about that it, it, i heard about that but i don't really get in you know i'm 57 i've heard that song so what you know, so I'm, I'm not I'm not anti Christmas, but I mean, that's one song during the Christmas season. They play what six weeks, right? You could get by. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's that's where I'm at. This whole just because people feel offended, they think that that makes them right about something. Well, it is. Oh. It is. It is right to be offended and to say it upsets you, but when you're met with, I don't give a fuck, well, that's what you have to accept. <laughs> that, that is it. That is it. And I think, I think if the, the, I think if people just said, really, why? And then they could explain why they're offended. It would just go away. It's just that concept. I don't care. We're going to play it anyway. You're wrong. That's what gets people to go farther. I think if you just tell the truth, do you play it on the podcast? No, but you know, with the way people feel about it, it makes me just want to do an hour and a half loop of Baby It's Cold Outside <laughs> but, but, one week just as a joke. I don't give a fuck. I'm savage. I do not care. No, but my. <laughs> because you got to understand, you're a comedian. You understand. I understand. Controversy. If I did something like that to piss people off, 
my listenership is probably going to triple. It will. It will. It will. <laughs> you should think about that for the new year. Uh, but my I mean, we say <laughs> lots of things on this show to piss people off. But but my point is, you, you don't play it on here. You don't play it on here. How do you listen to it when you're in a store? Or you're in a ra- in a car through a radio station that you have no control of anyway. <laughs> so what the problem is, you know, is is like these people that say, uh, "Oh, you got to be worried about the migrant caravan." Why? <laughs> when they get here, I'm not renting to them. I'm not employing them. <laughs> I'm not feeding them. What that got to do with me? <sighs> Dude, yeah, that's another shit storm that I was just like, who cares? Like, uh, I think you know what? I and just it, think it's funny they didn't go to Texas. If yeah, if it wasn't <laughs> staged, like, nope, if it wasn't that. staged, literally they would have looped right up to to Texas. Although, can you imagine trying to get across the border in Texas? Mm, I don't think Texas would have. You get it. your head blown clean <laughs> off. <laughs> Texans are here, like, nope. <laughs> here's here's the thing. Here's the thing for real that I don't understand about the caravan these people are walking walking from Honduras walking <laughs> from Honduras through Mexico and people are saying we got a right to know who's coming into our country they're walking you can get down there you know who, by the if you really wanted to know who they were you could go down there you could find out who they are you could find out everything about them. You could even set them up with, with whatever they needed to do to claim. Because they all say the same thing. We're going to declare amnesty. You can stop them right there. If you're going to declare amnesty, you got to do this, 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 or else go back. <clears throat> it could be done with this. We got to stop them. They're bringing, they're bringing uh, all these diseases and stuff with them. <laughs> that we don't already have. <laughs> that we don't already have Please. and other immigrants from other countries don't already have. Right. There's only one untainted people on the planet and they are the Sentinelese and they are the champions of border control. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they win. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. You saw that, right? I saw, I saw that. I saw that. I love those I people. I want to be one of those people. <laughs> I I want to get close enough to the island with a bullhorn where they can just hear me, but not be close enough for arrows and just be like, thank you. Keep up the good work. People, I don't know if you can understand me, but I love you. Just thumbs up. Yeah. Just thumbs up. Good job. Watch. That's like flipping them off. Yeah. No, you just, would, they wag their dicks yeah, at people. Just, they wag their dicks at people. That's the most... That's the most gangster shit I've ever heard. That like, is. You, you can got do shot that with an and arrow. Give him the and thumbs up. That way it looks like it. one of them's and okay. And now this dude's helicoptering <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> laughing at thumbs you. Thumbs up and the wiener. You're good. <laughs> good job. He's daring you to come back. That's right. <laughs> they pump the world. You killed the man and that's exactly what it was. Now they said and what are you going to do? That's exactly what they said. I mean, these people not on are, our land. You yeah, don't. <laughs> they're actually a protected species. Like they, you you, ha- see, you have to look at it kind of like wildlife or nature. These are not people that are part of the rest of the world. No, and see, so, no. <laughs> they shoot helicopters. <laughs> here's the here's the here's the thing though. For real, I'm I'm a. I try to be a Christian. Um, you. Some people will say I'm not a perfect Christian. Some people will say I'm not the best Christian. Never met one. Some people will say I'm not even a good Christian, but I try. Here's the thing. It says in the New Testament in Matthew, Go ye therefore, baptizing and teaching in the name of Jesus Christ, and I will be with you always. That means Christians are supposed to go. That's why they're Christian missionaries. That's why the Christian church grew over the centuries. But I've been reading this guy. I've been reading this guy. He never said the guy that died got killed. Yeah. He never said God told me to go. He said I'm going for God. There's a difference. What he didn't know was God's border stopped three miles short of that <laughs> island shore. <laughs> if they if, weren't having it. <laughs> if God would have put it on his heart to go. He would have went and would have been successful. He never mentioned that. He decided to go. He broke the law 
because he got somebody to smuggle him to the island. Well, no, no. what ha- like the the ship that they were on stopped at the three mile radius, and they had to get in a boat off the ship, and they went on this little fucking dinky ass boat. And they didn't even hit shore. They're just like, nope, you're no. Go. They did. He no. Mm-hmm. He, no, I, he got I on the shore, went into the fucking jungle. And they came running out with arrows in him, <laughs> dude. That's. Well, I mean, he should. Did he not watch Indiana Jones? Like, <laughs> start the plane, Doctor Jones, Doctor Jones. Doctor, Doctor Jones. <laughs> I feel I feel sorry for his family, but sometimes you can be over arrogant, regardless <laughs> of faith. Yeah. Look, I mean, I'm an atheist, but anybody who has faith, that's fine. But your faith needs to be paired with common sense. No, see, that's that's the thing. That's the thing. There's a lot of common sense in spirituality. The United States Constitution is based on the Bible's common laws. The problem is us. You know, that's that's trying to interject the that's been, fanaticism. That's of been the into whole yes. problem for for eons. Yep. It's when we interpret it this way, like, and even these people that go to these, we get to say whatever we want, so I'll just say it. Uh, the people that go to these white churches, but they're Christians. <laughs> you know what I mean? Have you ever been to one of those? Fuck yeah, all, all it is is it's, it's an overrated beauty pageant, and it's a cash roundup. That's what First of is. all, first of all, every, you know, every single church, every single church I've ever seen, if they were to, if they were ever to be investigated by the IRS, they would be shut down overnight. Shut down. Most of them that I've seen, especially around here, is a status thing. Oh, of course. If, if you don't show up, you're not part of the the clique. <laughs> and that, and I know those churches. I can tell you those churches oh, right yeah. now. <laughs> yep. And that is what's wrong with the church today. You know, it's it's not about it's not about what Jesus wants. It's about what we think we want Jesus in the name to do. of Jesus. Yeah, that that's that's what it is. You know, I have a I have a problem with have a problem with people who are Christians going. We're going to missionary. We're going to do missionary work in Spain and Mexico and all these places. But you don't want to talk to a black person right across the street. <laughs> you know, that's this. I can't I can't fathom that. I. That's one of my biggest points of hypocrisy about religion in general. You will go to these third world countries because you think you're doing some noble fucking deed. And meanwhile, how many homeless people do we have in this country right here that need your help? Oh, you're going to use the money to purchase this land over wherever and build, you know, a school and build a little uh, like a, a medical center. Or you could purchase some land here and do the same thing and create a shelter and provide medical care and food see the reason because of tourists and missionaries that's why the that's the start of the immigrant caravan you know have like i had a friend who uh, a couple years ago married a woman from the philippines and she wasn't from the city in the Philippines. He had to go, got a hotel in the city, and then he had a couple days travel to get there where she lived. And he said he couldn't believe it. They actually believe that the United States, the streets are paved with gold. They think it's a utopia over here. And when <laughs> when tourists go over there and tourists get excited because things are cheaper over there than they are at Pier 1, <laughs> They go crazy, and they, and tourists, tourists brag. Oh, this is cheaper than in America. You should come to America. In America, well, why wouldn't you come? You've been bragging about it. They've been hearing about it for years. Yeah, they said America is cool. We'll go there. You know, you can't you can't say America. Everybody's free, and expect people not to come. <clears throat> yeah, that's one of the biggest myths about our country is the freedom. Yeah. No, we're all economic slaves. Unless you are independently wealthy and you don't answer to someone? No. Nope. And that's, that's the whole thing, the independently wealthy. 
want to use you to stay wealthy. Oh, of course. That that's it. That's it. They 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 run this. Their money makes money. This thing they were running a couple years ago just cracked me up. The minimum people wanted the minimum wage to be raised to fifteen dollars. So instead of just saying no, they got all the people that are hourly workers now making more than fifteen dollars to bitch about it. And I don't understand why. I mean, they're using the same. When I for my first job, my first paycheck job was in nineteen seventy seven. Minimum wage was like a dollar. dollar 80 and when it and it went successively through my high school years from a dollar 80 to 210 to 235 to 335 and every time they raised it i heard the same arguments from the people who didn't want it raised and every time it got raised nothing happened nothing happened all this that they were going to do nothing happened everybody made money but now, because it's fifteen dollars an hour, they have convinced somehow the people that make seventeen dollars an hour currently that, oh, then I don't get to make that much. Well, why not? Yours. Yeah, that's what I've tried to explain to people. <laughs> why should a fast food worker make fifteen dollars an hour? And I'm like, jackass. Just because you right now make seventeen, eighteen dollars an hour, so if they raise the minimum wage, wage. They're going to have to raise your wage to compensate for the skill that you're offering. Otherwise, why would you not leave that job, take a $3 an hour pay cut, and go work a hell of a lot easier job? Yep. For, for well, the... go. Would you rather be walking scaffolding 200 feet in the air, risking your goddamn life every day for $18 an hour, or would you rather flip burgers at a fryer for 15 an hour? But see, that that's... I flip burgers all day. That's my thing. Everybody works. Right. Everybody works, and when you work, you sweat. Well, no matter what you do, you work, and you work hard. Especially me. I'm a fat kid. You can't. You can't. I don't see how people, you know, if flipping burgers was so easy, everybody would do it. And if you really think flipping burgers is easy, you should try it. Oh, I've done it. Be, I'm just comparing it to. But no, but that's, that's my point. The people that are complaining... They're one of some of the most suckiest customers ever. Right. They come in and say stupid things. Um, how big is your medium Coke? <laughs> um, what's on your burger? They got pictures of the burgers <laughs> on the menu. They got commercials describing the menu. And meanwhile, the people they're bashing are, are the people that they depend on for everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, this this burger had romaine lettuce. I wanted iceberg lettuce. It said that to begin with. When most people's not going to notice it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's... Our society today <clears throat> has become bitch-made. Like, it's just... I don't understand. Like, I, I, I grew up around my grandparents. Mm-hmm. My grandparents didn't complain about shit. Like it, just whatever, whatever was happening, you just rolled with it. Like, could you? <laughs> I love these memes that show the dudes from World War Two storming the beaches of Normandy. Mm -hmm. It's like, could you have imagined if they just couldn't deal with life that day and they needed, you know, a personal <laughs> mental health day and. They just, these dudes ran on that beach knowing that they were going to die and they didn't sign up to be there they were called yeah they, they got a letter they got they got gonna, forced to do it. yes you're, you're going and that's like i don't understand well i've talked about this before i don't do the whole military worship thing i don't i've got too many friends that are vets that have told me flat out they're like man i hate that shit like the dude the the thanking a veteran doesn't it make you uncomfortable? It I, I, it, I'm a. It's off putting. I'm a. I'm a vet, and and I do it because because you're a vet. Exactly. Those are your brothers and sisters. Exactly. And, and that's different. And the Vietnam vets, I have they hold a special place in my heart because my father's a, my father was a Vietnam vet, and my mother in law, my late mother in law, her husband was a Vietnam vet, and. She put it best. She hates the thank you and the worship the troops are getting now because when her husband came back, he
He didn't get that. And yep. and and I can fully understand that. They got spit on. They got spit on. They got called shit baby killers thrown at them and all yeah. of that. <clears throat> they didn't even call them. They didn't even call them troops back then. They called them GIs. Yep. And and they got no respect because they weren't anybody. They were just GIs. Now they're like, <clears throat> oh, they're troops. You gotta. I had a friend. I have a friend who joined the army. Hadn't even got the basic training. People are saying like, "Oh, thank you for your service." Yeah, I feel bad. I, like, I can sort of understand that because the United States has the only all volunteer military service. Right, but yeah, other countries don't get it. Like, they're like, "Why do you think you're military?" I have friends from Russia, and they're like, "I graduated high school. I go serve military, and then I go get job." That is that is what all That's what we do. That is what most <laughs> other countries do. You 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 have to serve 2 years in the service. Yeah, you do one before time before you do anything else. Yeah. United States, it's <clears throat> not. And the people that do the most complaining about the military and most demanding that you worship the military didn't join. Right. You know, I had right. a I was I was on Facebook arguing with a friend about Muhammad Ali. That's my wife. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> you have your wife set as Darth Vader's breathing. That's amazing. I don't. I don't understand why people laugh when I do that. I don't understand why. People... Okay. So one of my buddies has his wife. His wife's ringtone set as the Imperial uh, Death March. Da, da, da. That's what she was at first, but then I found the Darth Vader one, and the Darth Vader one is just so cool. I know. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't understand why people laugh. That is just so cool. That was the greatest thing I've ever seen. That's, <laughs> that's my, my wife. That's Hold my on. wife. Hold on. I'm sorry. I thought he, I thought, he, I thought he was going to a breathing treatment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, I've got you know I have friends who who served also that are like, I hate when people if I'm wearing any like I have friends now that just avoid. I have friends that will you would never know they were in the service. Unless you badger it out of them, mm -hmm. like they don't even they don't even want to tell you, they don't even want to talk about it, and they're some of them. Their opinion, like their view, is I don't I don't like it when people thank me for that because you don't realize what being in war will actually do to you and the things that you will do that you're not told to. Yep. See, it's I, that mob mentality oh, that can take over in a street, you know, in I, a riot. I, and I thank them for this this one thing. This one thing. When you volunteer, you just don't go in. It's not like getting a job where you just start. There's an oath you have to swear to. You are sworn in. Right. Every veteran has sworn to defend the Constitution um, from enemies, foreign and, and domestic, domestic, up to and including dying. Yep. The fact that you are willing to do that. That says something to me, you know, because I was arguing with a friend back when they were talking about Muhammad Ali, who chose not to be inducted. They stopped that, ironically, when Donald Trump ran for president. But, uh, well, Ali should, I said, listen, did you serve? He said, oh, no, I was scared. Well, then stop talking about it. <laughs> I almost joined the Marines in 98. And then I thought better of it very quickly. And I was like, nope, I'm not getting sent to some desert third world shithole for somebody else's fucking agenda. No way. Nope. Like the more I, the more time I spent with this staff sergeant and gunnery sergeant mm -hmm. that were trying to recruit me. Like I even went down and did the physical and everything. And I need at that time I needed to drop 20 pounds, which that would have been no big deal. But... The more time I spent with them, the more I was like, mm, "Nope, nope." Mm -hmm. There, there are there are some there are a lot of good things about being in the military. A lot, a lot of good things. The problem is that this this force worship is diluting <clears throat> that. You know, like the people, like again, I, Donald Trump. Don, we're going to take you. We, we want you to go to Vietnam. Nope, nope, nope. He's five different times, four different times. He said no until the fifth time. They just said he said no again. 
okay, because you got bone spurs. But now he's the one. They're kneeling. They're disrespecting our military. Come on, dude. You did that when you didn't go in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the, That's another. The, the whole kneeling thing. I don't give a shit if you're doing jumping jacks or a handstand during the national anthem. Again, we are the only country that puts so much. It's, it's almost like the government has now conditioned this entire nation to bow down before them okay. like like peasants had to do to the monarchy back in the day. This is, like, this is how stupid that kneeling thing is. The actual chronolo- chron- chronology will show you how stupid it is. August of 2016, the National Anthem is played. Colin Kaepernick sits on a bench. Mm-hmm. August of 2016 in a preseason game. Cameraman at NBC, who, if the if you, if if it is believed, is supposed to also be standing with his hand over his heart, <laughs> sees him and he zooms in three or four times so people could see it. NBC tried to make it a story. Nothing happened. Yeah, nobody bit. He knelt. He sat on the bench again a couple weeks later. Nothing happened. Then a Navy SEAL, who is his friend said, listen, I kind of don't like it, but I understand it, so can you at least kneel, because that's what we do. He said, I can do that. So he began kneeling in 2016. Nobody said anything. Yep. November of 2016, President-elect Trump said, well, I don't like what it says about our country. It's like disrespecting our country. Nobody said anything. March of 2017, Colin Kaepernick says he he leaves the Chiefs and I mean the 49ers and says I may not kneel if I get with another team. I don't know. Everything's over. Donald Trump goes to Alabama right after the Mueller investigation is announced and said, you know, I'd like to fire all these people and the crowd goes behind him and he uses the calls them SOBs. NFL owners are like, they're not SOBs, they're people just like you, and agreed with them and knelt for one game, for one game. A lot of them don't agree with the kneeling, but they knelt to show solidarity with their players. All of a sudden, a year later, now there's boycotts, and now there's people, I'm not going to watch the NFL anymore. (laughs) They don't show the national, if it's not the playoffs or the Super Bowl, they don't show the NFL, the National Anthem on air TV football games anyway. Why are you not watching? And it's even dumber if you're not watching, but you go to Yahoo Sports or ESPN and check scores. You might as well watch. Right. Right. It's a... Uh, like, I... I made the point last year when everybody was, you know, when it was really getting hyped up about the kneeling. So, I go to a bar here to watch the Steelers games and people were talking about it before the game started I didn't say a word and I waited until right before the game when they did the national anthem Mm -hmm. and I looked around and I waited till it was done and I'm still sit I'm sitting on my couch in in the bar I waited till it was done and I stood up and I turned around and I said Every single one of you that were talking about players kneeling and disrespecting the national anthem, literally none of us were standing for that anthem except the bartender who has to stand. Is it? And everybody was like, oh, oh, well, but there, and I was like, no, but nothing. But nothing. You got no argument. Everybody was sitting on their asses, including myself. But I'll tell you flat out, like, okay, if I'm at the if I'm at the stadium, I'm gonna stand. Yeah, stand. yeah. yeah I'm gonna stand. I'm if gonna I'm take off my hat. TV, hell no. The <laughs> reason, like I said, I don't do worship, <clears throat> but I have respect. The reason you stand if you're at a game is because it's not law. It's because they ask you nicely. Right. They always Would everybody say, "Please rise, Will you and please rise, caps? or please stand." Yep. They ask you nicely. They don't. They don't. Some countries, it is a law. You are forced. Yeah. We don't do that. We ask you nicely, and that's what it is. They're not. They told you from the get go, they're not disrespecting America. 
But as a black person, how could you feel, you know, there are, there, you know, you can, you get jacked up if you're black just because you're black. And then they'll say, oh, well, get over it. We made a mistake. But if that, that mistake led to someone's death, how are you supposed to feel then? How many times a week or a month do we see shit just fly up on social media? Like, oh, another fucking Al Capone with a badge. That's why I shop <laughs> online now. I really do. I have, <laughs> if I had the money, I would buy a body cam and just, just walk to see people's reactions. People dreadlocks scare people. I don't know why. <laughs> But dreadlocks scare people. Hey, if I could grow Not, hair, I'd have dreadlocks. <laughs> it doesn't scare all hair. people. <laughs> Some people they they're really weird. I was at I was at a I was at a a, a hotel on Ferris Avenue a couple years ago, and I was walking to my room, and a white dude saw me and he got excited. He came running up to me. I knew what he was gonna ask me. He's selling drugs. And he wants to know if I want to buy them. Just cause he saw the dreads, <laughs> I was like, "Man, no, I don't, I don't, I don't even drink. Just go." And that that either they either think because you have dreads, you're automatically some sort of criminal, of course, or because you're dreads, you're automatically some sort of criminal, and we should get with you. <laughs> yeah, uh, my buddy Jay he's got dreads too and and he's he's kind of a bigger dude and people that don't know him are just intimidated as fuck by him and i'm like he's a kitten go talk to that dude for 10 seconds and you're gonna feel like a dumbass like <laughs> that's all you gotta do go go talk to him that that's, that's all you gotta do. honestly that's part of the that's part of the biggest problem with today's society social media there is no actual conversation you throw your opinion out Mm-hmm. And that's it. And everybody's and then anybody who disagrees with you, you block them. And it's like, man, you, you motherfuckers are scared of confrontation and conversation. And uh, well, <coughs> well, you, I've done my share of blocking. <coughs> well, I mean, look, if people get way too far out of line, that's one thing. But just because someone disagrees with your viewpoint, maybe have the conversation and be like, okay, <coughs> explain to me why you feel that way. Well, a lot of the problem now too is. You know, back in the day, you had a conversation like this. You're standing face to face with someone having a conversation. You wouldn't dare say half real the fucking brave yeah. behind this you screen. Wouldn't, yep. You wouldn't dare say half the shit right. you do online to someone's face because right. you know you're gonna get your ass beat. I was talking with a guy on Facebook. <laughs> about, here, this this is what I t- I was talking with a friend. You never have really disagreements with friends. You have differences of opinion, but it's the friends of friends. That, that jump in with the Facebook stones and say stuff. So I was talking with my friend about the kneeling, and I said, listen, if you really wanted to solve this, make it simple. Ask your Republican-controlled Congress, Senate, White House, and now Supreme Court to make it a law that says you have to stand during the national anthem. Oh, man, could you imagine the snowflake backlash from that? <laughs> but that is just, it's just that... When I grew up, that's how the system worked. You wanted some change, you went to the government, they passed the law. If it didn't, if it wasn't a good law, it got outvoted. If it was, it got voted in. And if people still didn't like it, the Supreme Court said if it could stay a law or not. That's how the system's supposed to work. So if you really wanted it, it could have been a law a long time ago. It could have been right now in the Supreme Court deciding it. But they didn't want to do that. So I'm talking to my friend about that. Here's this other guy. So do you think uh, protesting the Constitution is wrong? No, because that's how all the amendments got into the Constitution by protest. Well, if you kneel in front of me, um, ask some dude I don't care about. And then (laughs) ask his mom, because I slapped him in front of his mom, which told me everything I needed to know right there, because... Okay, so you could slap me, but you don't think I'd hit you back? Right, living with what comes after that's the difficult part. <laughs> and I look, I look slapping me is easy. <laughs> yeah. I went to easy. his profile and saw this guy. 
it was all Facebook. He wasn't gonna slap me. He was just talking. <laughs> yeah. He was just talking. So I just that, that, I just stopped talking. And that's what ninety nine percent of Facebook is. Someone nope. wanting to just run their mouth. That's why I post funny memes. I do I like to post offensive things that get people up in their feelings. I love that because I will not block you. You can leave your comments and I'll get into it with you and I will try to break it down to the lowest common denominator and be like, Why do you feel this way? I don't I don't go that far. I just tell everybody the truth. Facebook gives me an individual page so that I can post my thoughts and feelings. Yeah. Exactly. If you do not want to see my thoughts and feelings, yep. there are things you can do so they don't show up. That's is that is that simple because as long as I have a page, my page, my individual page, it's what I want to put on it. Yep. All if right. you don't like it, you can deal with it, but that's not going to stop me from putting what right. I want on it. Well, most of the stuff that I want to post on my page now gets me put in Facebook jail because Zuckerberg's a prick. <laughs> I don't. I, you're, I have another friend who, I mean, he's a serial Facebook criminal. <laughs> I love it. Facebook I, criminals. Oh, my God. I need to make a new page. And Terry, Terry, get on that right now. Facebook criminals. I don't, I don't understand that. I mean, because... That could go wrong. He's, he's a, uh, <laughs> I'm a liberal. He's not. But, and he posts some things that I'm like, wow, he said that? But we're friends. <laughs> we have respect for each other. Right. And so I let him go, you know, and he keeps saying, I got put in Facebook jail. And I'm like, for that? I see that all the time. He's not the only non liberal that's right. posting that stuff. How do you get in jail? And everybody else doesn't. I don't. I don't get that. I've never been in Facebook probably, jail. He's probably been there enough that he's on a watch list now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure the algorithm includes my name <laughs> and a few of my friends because I have. I have uh, my friend Terry. She mm -hmm. has three Facebook accounts because that shit. Her shit gets shut down all the time because she's a complete savage and. I miss the days, like, look, I get on your general page, okay, don't post nudity or porn or any kind of just completely filthy, you know, degradation of humanity, but there are secret groups on Facebook. Like, you can create a group mm -hmm. for discussion and make it secret where the only people that can even find it are people you invite. Yeah. And I still think that it should be lawless wasteland there. Like, that should oh, yeah. be the savage land. That's the Thunderdome, bitch. Well, Welcome, am, two men in or one man leaves. Like that. <laughs> I am in one of those groups. It's a private group, and they say stuff. I mean, it's it's funny, but I'm like, holy it's cow. It's not I've for even, the general population. I've even posted stuff in there that's like, yeah, this, this, you know, people would see that like, John, you put that? Yeah, you, you know, you know, it wouldn't survive in the general Facebook right. world. <laughs> it's I've like got prison. a lot of those. It's on like my prison. Phone. You've got general population, and you got the shoe. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the segregation holding you. Yeah, and that's where the bad people are, and that's what our secret groups on Facebook should be. Zuckerberg, leave that shit alone. No, I totally agree. With we that. want the lawlessness there. The we, Tucker the, and I were only, talking about this. The before only thing you guys. that's going to happen is Facebook's going to try to shut that down, and someone's going to make another spot. Yep, that's 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 all what happened is. to MySpace. Yeah, MySpace thought that they were untouchable. Now Tom is his only friend. Right, right now, <laughs> Tom is his only own friend. I right. still have a MySpace page. Oh, I still do. I, I see it every now and then. Like, I've gone back to it. I'm like, right now, oh, this is dead. It's a graveyard. It is a graveyard. It's not even the Facebook that. I don't even know what it is now because it's all like now music that I don't listen to. <laughs> and I'm it's music like, that nobody listens to because nobody goes on there. Yeah, even back then it was music you didn't want to listen to. <laughs> you go to somebody's page and they're like force raping your ears yeah. with whatever bullshit they put into. the music in the background. And you're like, why? <laughs> Where's the stop? Where's the pause button? Yeah, there mm -hmm. isn't one because yeah. they embedded it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you fucker. <laughs> and you have, you're supposed to have your top. Top like what was it? Oh eight yeah, list the top up being friends like list. Yeah. Oh man, there were there were hurt feelings <laughs> over that. I didn't give a fuck about any of that. And it was so funny when you move someone. They're like, "Well, why'd you move? Why me? did I get bumped from four to seven? 
Bitch, you're lucky you're still on my friends list. I've known you for too long in real life, and I really don't like you. Yeah. Like, that was stupid. Your top, your top eight friends. Now your top twelve friends. Now your top twenty four friends. Come on. You got twenty four top friends. Then you're a heck of a guy, but they're not twenty four your top friends. They're just twenty four people. Yeah. Now go look at their top twenty four friends and show me where you're at. Yeah. Where's your picture? You're not there. <laughs> Yeah, they think you're a cunt. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, MySpace. So, but yeah, Twitter. Twitter is the last savage land yeah, left. Twitter Tumblr. Is the only Tumblr one. just got fucked up. I Tumblr. Love... Tumblr is taking away all of the porn. Tum- and I'm like, that's the only reason you exist. That mm. would be like Pornhub saying, we're not going to have porn anymore. What? Tumblr was a savage land. Yes. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I'm 57. I don't do Tumblr. Not it's just. I'm just too old to keep following social media. <laughs> I don't. Tumblr's dead. I now. don't do <laughs> Instagram. I don't do Snapchat. I don't do. I do Facebook and Twitter. That's that's enough. Well, Tucker just informed me uh, that I have a reason to live on Snapchat now. I have and Snapchat. Nubsy will too if, yeah. if he's not following her. Yeah, Who's but that? apparently Bonnie Rotten what? has a Snapchat. Yeah. Ex- <laughs> And out comes this phone. <laughs> oh, God. Who's Bonnie Rotten? Oh, 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 sir. We can't post that on here. Oh, please. yeah, but you can Google a picture of her and show him. She's. Well, I got to bring it up for Nuzzy. <laughs> well, I don't think Bonnie you Rotten is like the, He's on she's, it. she's this goth chick. She's just tattooed all to hell. Yeah. And she does porn. And she is. You can't take a picture of it. You have to type it. She's hot oh, as fuck. Lame. She's I'll dirty. Show, I'll she's filthy. The, I'll show you the Snapchat filthy. story in a second. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love. I'm happy. I'm happy with Twitter because there's not that many people following me, which means when I post stuff on Twitter, I'm basically like talking to myself. <laughs> yeah, but Twitter, and so I just post stuff. I just I just on, post stuff and let it go. On Twitter, you don't get the backlash though, it, unless it, you're Joe Rogan <laughs> and you use hashtag vegan. Yeah, Becky Lynch, vegan cat. Becky Lynch is great. That's the man. Yeah. I mean, I respond to a couple of people, but I don't respond angrily. Mostly, it's supportive because it's my friends who are doing <laughs> something cool. I do, I do respond uh, angrily to uh, Stacy Dash because Stacy Dash is one of the dumbest people I ever met my whole entire life. Wait a minute, who's Stacy Stacy Dash? She an actress? Clueless. Yup. Yeah, oh that's my her. God. That's her. That's her. That's Bonnie Rodden. Wow, you guys got me looking at a naked woman on Sunday. <laughs> That's not naked. She's she not had, naked. Yeah, bro, That's only the private What'd you show? What? Hang on. I'll watch it later. Nope, I gotta get back there now. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, around. She knows my bottom. wife is gonna listen to this one day. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> not me, John. But the reason... The reason I argue with her is because when she was younger, after Clueless, she made a career out of doing bikini shots and butt shots yeah. and modeling in these in these magazines for men and her whole income her whole existence was based around looking good and right. now that and now some sort of way people aren't that interested in her anymore so then she goes to work for Fox News she's now a conservative i have more respect for the actress Patricia Heaton who's always been a conservative and told you so, than Stacey Dash. Patricia Heaton is the mom from... Uh, Everybody Loves Ray yes. and the middle. Yeah. And she's always, from the beginning, said, I'm a conservative, this is what I believe in. And let it go. And let it go. They asked her opinion, she says, it's because I'm a conservative. And everybody lets it go. She didn't have to prove anything. She didn't have to defend anything. She doesn't talk about anything. I'm a conservative. I'm going to work. She goes to work. I'm not saying she has to be quiet. I'm saying she is quiet. And she doesn't, her conservatism means nothing to anybody else. And she knows that she enjoys what she does. And she wants to keep doing it. Stacy Dash, now that Fox has let her go, says some incredibly stupid things. <laughs> like when the guy got killed, when Khashoggi got killed, she said she we should forget about it because he was an American. That's the most vile thing I ever heard. Because he wasn't a born American, 
but he was slaughtered. That's the dude in uh, Iran, right? The, yeah. Turkey that got yeah, yeah, yeah. butchered alive. <sighs> yeah. yeah, that was bad. Yeah, You're not supposed to be upset about it because he wasn't an American. <laughs> That's the most vile, you know, that's the most vile thing. She, and I even asked her, did Jesus teach you that? Uh. <laughs> she hasn't responded to me. <laughs> She's clueless. Uh. Oh, man. See, that's one thing. Look, well, so many people in this country, they, they claim conservative, they claim liberal, whatever. And Marilyn Manson had it right back in the 90s, and he said... We live in a celebritarian society. Oh, yeah. Where celebrity opinions are held at a gold standard. It matters no matter and, what. Yeah. And personally, I look at all this and I'm like, if you're a celebrity, that means I like your work. I don't give a fuck oh, about what? your opinion. Uh, you live in a fucking fantasy land. You can't connect with real people anymore. You may have been a real person at one time, but now you've been so far removed and separated from that. And you live in this vile society. Oh, I, I just think like sometimes it's funny. Like when Donald Trump was running for president, all the celebrities that were endorsing him, if you looked at it, it's like a has been tour. <laughs> You know, Scott ba Scott Bale. Scott Bale. Uh, yeah. Charles, you ain't been in charge of shit since 1993, bitch. Shut Anthony, up. Anthony Sabato, he supported the Trump. Only, now he's running for Congress. The only Come thing on. good Scott Bale ever did was gave us Pam Anderson. Yeah, true story. That's the only good thing <laughs> he ever did. You know, the last, thing I, the last thing I saw from Scott Bale was... The Nicole Eggert? No. <laughs> well, yeah, I saw that, but his last regular TV show was VH1's Where Scott are they now? Bale's Married and Pregnant. <laughs> I said, where are they now? I actually enjoyed that show. <laughs> yeah, because most of them end up destitute and drugged out, and it makes you feel better about your life. <laughs> right. Because the thing about being a celebrity is it is the most Republican thing you could do. Like Republicans always say you have to work and you have to produce. Nothing says working and producing like being a celebrity in music, entertainment, movies, theater, or, or comedy. You have to work. The, the thing all of the successful ones have in common is that they work. They hustle more than anybody else. And look at the ones that buck the system. They end up, oh, all of a sudden there are all kinds of salacious stories being put out about them. They're on drugs. Uh, they get busted for this and that. It's like, what? Come on. That's why Dave Chappelle left. Dave Chappelle was like. Yeah, they tried to PC him. And he yeah. Like, nope. And they, Dave, well, they, it was way worse, man. If you watch that interview when he came back and he talked to Oprah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, man, Dave. I'm surprised Dave's still alive. From no, the shit he said on there. Like, because because he, he told said the, it. He told the truth. He told the truth and he said it. Once he said it, what could they do? That's true, yeah. Now people are watching. Yep. And now he's still making money. I don't know, though. Bill and Hillary still managed to kill plenty of people. So. <laughs> <laughs> Look I, at how many. There you go. Look at how many deaths are tied to the Clinton Foundation. They, but see... It's astronomical, man. It it's is. not a coincidence. It's, it's How do people commit suicide by shooting themselves in the back of the head twice? But see, Come here's on. the here's the it's, what that what that says to me, honestly. What that says is there are lazy investigators. Well, there is paid investigators. Oh, you know, it ain't lazy. It ain't lazy. No, it's, that's a payment. It's, it's fear and money. Because if it can happen to this person that was way higher, more of more prominence than a detective. What yeah. can happen to that detective? And that's why there are Black Lives Matter protests. Yeah. Because that that what you just said, if it could happen, I've had guns pulled on me by police twice. And both times I was this close to getting shot. But because <clears throat> the I was scared and didn't want to die, nothing happened. And the police turned out to be both times very professional 
one of them that pulled the gun on me actually apologized and spent time apologizing to me when I really wanted him to continue chasing the suspect he was chasing. But that that's why. You know, it could happen to anybody. They say, well, if you don't look this, that... You know who James Blake is? Yep. James Blake. Here's the home address for James Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, nope, you got Holy Siri God. talking <laughs> to you. <laughs> Big John's giving out people information. <laughs> I don't even know who Siri, James Bennett is. Siri's like, here's a James Bennett that's close to you. <laughs> Better Holy make sure cow. Siri didn't call him. <laughs> <laughs> you better take that out of your pocket and set it up here. For oh my god! <laughs> Siri, Siri's going wild over here. Yep. Here's James Bennett. <laughs> he was a, but James was. James is a Harvard graduate. Harvard graduate, college graduate, standing outside the U.S. Open, waiting for some friends. College graduate, former competitor in the U.S. Open. The tennis world knows who he is. He's standing there in a sweater, dress shirt, dress pants on his phone. Police are chasing a black guy. Yep. That's all. That's all. That's all they say. We're supposed to be getting getting a black guy. So they run up in front of all these white people, tackle and handcuff him, and then say. Oh, my mistake. We're looking for a different black guy. You know, they, they, the, the, the description of a black guy is always the same thing. We're looking for a black guy, 18 to 34, 510 to 62. That's just about every black guy you know. <laughs> if they're not in the NBA, that's, that's just about every <laughs> black guy you know. <laughs> but then if they're looking for anybody else, they get super descriptive. We're looking for a white guy, 5'11 and 3 quarters with a tattoo on his right arm. <laughs> Dirty blonde hair, <laughs> blue eyes. <laughs> Hangs out at this spot, last seen in this area. He's a capital. Known <laughs> aliases. <laughs> but people don't get that. And they he always... likes cheesecake. <laughs> and I like cheesecake. But it's always the same thing. Well, if black people didn't commit crimes, not all black people commit crimes. <laughs> no. Hell, you can just take a drive through Jimtown to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Go a couple blocks over. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I live two blocks away from a war zone. And people think that I'm joking about it when I talk about it. I'm like, Hell no, no, literally. You don't want to go two blocks my, south of this place. <laughs> no, nah, yeah. When my windows are open, mm-hmm. we hear gunshots. I've been, I've been um, down the street, down the street to Riverside, take a left. On Lodge. Yeah, buddy. There's an apartment complex that the uh, neighbors that's exactly across what we're the street about right now. <laughs> the neighbors across the street refer to it as Cabrini Green because the the violence is so rampant. And I'm like, you know, yep. What uh, it's what Oak Oak Park apart or what Woodland Woodland Park apartment? Yep, Sunburst oh, Boulevard, yeah. man. It is. Whew. I've been there once. I mean, I saw it. It's crazy. I saw it in the daytime, and the guy who who lives across the street's like, "You don't want to be there at night." That's all I need yep. to know. Yeah, like there's times you don't want to be there during the nope. day. Nope, <laughs> the po- police won't go there without like multiple vehicles. Like there better be multiple officers for any call there. That's craziness. They should really just set up a <laughs> substation right there. <laughs> We're here all the time anyway. We'll just make the base right here. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the uh, this society. Well, I can't fall into that where everybody's like, "Man, the world's just getting crazier." No, no, it's not. The world's always been this crazy. We just have media to show. Yeah, it now. now we have instantaneous transmission of everything happening through social media. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you get bombarded. It's with always it. been this ridiculous. Yeah, it's just you doubt you hear about it now. Well, that's like you know, I grew up in a town of less than ten thousand. And there was, aside from the college, which the black dudes that went to this went to college there, they stayed there. And if they left, they went across the bridge and hung out in Princeton. And the only black family when I lived there 
this dude's name was literally Black Bob. Mm-hmm. And that, I mean, that's how he introduced himself. And to me, that wasn't weird because that's what I grew up in. And then when I got out in the real world, I was like, hey, you know, my black friend, Nate, doesn't like being referred to as Black Nate. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> like, it's one of those, that that realization of, oh, this is not the way the world is. Like, it's, hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That you're not you're not the only one that you're not the only one that does that, and a lot of people do that because they get comfortable because one black person says it's okay, they automatically assume they get to do it. Right, and they normalize it for people that that's their only exposure to a black person. And then all of a sudden, oh, I didn't know that this was bad. Yep, and then the people that that they get to do that to become the good ones. They should be more like him. <laughs> and that's what they mean by the breakdown of society. The good that is ones, such a great point. The good ones aren't around anymore. Oh, Yeah, they, the ones that tolerated all your shit and then would go home and just be like, oh, I hate these motherfuckers. That. <laughs> I hate these motherfuckers. That. <laughs> like, I think about that. And I, he was always so friendly. Like, I went to school with his son. He was just, he was a super friendly, nice guy. And now knowing what I know, I'm like, that dude had to go home every day and be like, these motherfuckers. Like <laughs> that, that was my dad. That is what I always, my dad went to Vietnam twice in the 60s. Mm. My black dad went to Vietnam twice in the 60s and went to the Korean conflict once. And he's over there fighting for America and defending our country who don't give a shit about it comes back in the 50s from Korea to segregation segregation was so rampant in the 50s when my dad got out he went back in the army because it was better for him he went to Korea came back from Korea we're going to Georgia to see my grandparents we're at a gas station my dad's trying to pay for gas the dude wouldn't take the money he wouldn't he wouldn't my dad tried to give him the money he wouldn't take it. My dad was pissed for a couple of hours about that. The whole the whole drive, he talked about that. And, and as I got older, I understand it now. And I'm like, you know, you got to understand these, these, what you're asking black people to do. You hate us, but you want us to defend you. Right. We want us to save your way of life. And not only that, but in society, well, why, like, can you just be less intimidating? What does that mean? I, I, I can't be. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just sexy. That's. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I need for him to meet Jay. Oh my God, you, you would love my buddy Jay so oh, much. That's, that's, you know, they, <laughs> they tell you growing up, just be you, just be you. March to the beat of your own drummer. Yeah, you right. do that, and then they put all these. Things Stigmas on you. Well, you got to be this. You got to be that. You should yep. do this. Mm-hmm. I went to. Uh, I was at a Golden Corral for Veterans Day for the free meal, which I don't think I'll ever do again. <laughs> um, and I'm. Sta- I didn't know it was the free oh, meal day. Oh, they're trying to kill veterans today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but honestly, I went in with my dreadlocks and my wife. We didn't know it was the free meal day. We were just going to eat. And I said, how much do you have a veteran's discount? And the cashier said, yes, it's free. And so I got my meal free, and I'm standing in line while she's doing the cash register thing. This dude just walks up behind me. I'm military. So am I. What are you saying? You know, you, you, don't, you don't get to push past me because you're, you're military. I'm just as military as you are. That time it was Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Straight called he just out. called Nubsy out. <laughs> it was. It hey, was. Nubsy, put your shit. <laughs> that's, that's how he. That's the the porn star is following him. Now. That's <laughs> See, Bonnie followed you back, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> See, that's what that notification was. <laughs> She's happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I roll with Noopsy. He's an undercover gangster. (laughs) Undercover gangster. (laughs) 
I was really hoping that would get out put into the podcast. <laughs> no, man, you 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 created that. You were stuck with that. <laughs> that is you. <laughs> my one of my favorite moments in comedy is I was doing a show, and Noobsy's mom was in the front <laughs> row. <laughs> That's gonna stick. You need oh, yeah. to know it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Noobsy slow. Because <laughs> every time I say it, I think about the uh, golden child. <laughs> oh God! It's better. never not gonna be funny to me now. <laughs> like this. <laughs> Chris's mom had no idea he called himself Noobsy. And that was the best explaining it to her <laughs> and looking at him in the back of the room. That was hilarious. Oh my God. It was, I a, want, good, it was a good show. <laughs> I just want to know how that Sunday dinner with mom went. Awkward. <laughs> what she told his dad Did you know your son calls himself Noopsy? <laughs> What is a noopsie? And why would he call himself a noopsie? Should we stop him from listening to rap music? <laughs> or stop him from making it? Making it, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Stop him from making it. It's taking him down a bad road. I mean, look. We'll start with taking his Mustang. Maybe that'll make him more regular. <laughs> So maybe they set up the uh, Market Street. Market hit. Street. <laughs> <laughs> it was a setup. <laughs> By the way, I have to tell you that until until Terry saw a picture of you, she thought you were black. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and now her universe has been shattered. <laughs> That's, uh... Oh my god. <clears throat> <laughs> what is a noopsie? Noobsy Why would you call stuff. yourself a noopsie? <laughs> How you pronounce it for real? <laughs> Nubsy. Oh no, it's, it's oh, noobsy now. now. Even what it's like. <laughs> noobsy. It's noobsy now. Noobsy. <laughs> first time I first time I saw it, I didn't hear it from him. I read it, <laughs> and yeah. the U was prominent, so I always said noopsy. Oh, it definitely oh, is now. It's oh a soft you. It's a soft it's you. A... <laughs> I thought you. I I, I called him that because the, the last time he and I did a show together, he said he wasn't going by that anymore. I said, "Yes, you are." <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Oh man. Oh, Tucker, you had some shit for the PC stuff. You said. Oh well. Well, that was just the whole retarded uh, Facebook comment yeah, that I got hold berated on, hold for. On. Wait, you were telling me something that you were going to, like, before the show started about uh, about saying retarded? Oh, yeah, getting <laughs> berated on Facebook the other day <laughs> for saying the word retarded. But the thing was, it was for someone turning in a meme. They were talking about, um, you know, how the, they were talking about the McDonald's toys. They wanted to make it uh, non gender, gender neutral now. They didn't want it to be a boy or girl toy so that was a meme and then the other one was a story about trump letting them use air force one to take bush's body to texas right so apparently both of those got reported by the same person so someone's just being an asshole wait hang on somebody got mad because the current president let a former president's body be flown somewhere yes. in Air Force One. Yeah. Oh yeah, there were people like really bitching about this. Yeah, my buddy posted a story and it got reported and taken down. That's just I mean, on his like you say, your your Facebook page is your personal. I think this is awesome. I'm going to share this, and he did that, and it got reported by the same person that reported the McDonald's <clears throat> thing. I would so, I would if I'd have seen it. I would. The problem with social media is. We don't recognize decency enough. Yeah. And that, no matter what you say or how you feel about the president, no matter what his motivations were, that was the decent thing to do. Because had he not, 
the same people that complained because he did it <laughs> would have complained that he didn't do it. Right. No, yeah. And it would have been more of a backlash if he didn't. Mm-hmm. I had to get to the point on Facebook where people that just repeatedly post political stuff, I had to unfollow them. Like they're still on my friends list, but now I just don't see your posts on my news feed because I don't give a shit. Well, it's you know, I, this you know? this is where I am now for real. <clears throat> if you comment on my page, I'm gonna look and see who you are. And if we've never talked before, we're not gonna talk now. <laughs> right. You know, you you I don't even know how we became friends. And if we're not if I don't know how we became friends, more than likely we aren't friends. So I don't need I don't need to talk to you. I don't need to argue. There's this guy. I posted something about the Civil Rights Act. About <clears throat> something happened to a guy during the Civil Rights. This guy posted well, I wasn't around then. It's not my fault. I never heard from him before. We have we have no friends in common. I'm like, how did you even get here? And if you didn't, if I can't answer that, you don't need to be here. See, I'm in the boat of I don't subscribe to the white guilt thing. No, no, I, I, I'm not a slave owner. I don't know any slave owners, and I didn't know anybody that knew anybody that was. But I also don't ignore the things that are happening in our society that see that that's the point nobody it's not about if you look at the liberal side though like like the the typical white liberal when you get them in your mind and you picture them Mm -hmm. they take shit too far like it's it's like it's so far off the reservation that just standard liberals (laughs) are like you're insane like you need you need mental help that 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 is true that is true but there's nothing there's you know if 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 you were born after slavery like we all were <laughs> right that don't mean you should absolve or forgive slavery you know that's all you have to say it was wrong we should never let it happen again and a lot of people aren't saying that you know slavery was wrong and because there are descendants of former slaves roaming the country. <clears throat> that doesn't make them lesser people. Right. That doesn't mean you have to hate them. That that's what that's the point people are trying to make. Well, the thing that I see though is this when I say the white guilt, do you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Like the people that try to put it all on themselves and they try to put it on other white people and they're like, You're responsible for this and I'm like Bitch, I have never signed one piece of legislation in my life, nor have I ever cracked a whip on anybody's skin, unless they asked me to. <laughs> but that's a whole different story. Uh, <clears throat> Terry. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, it's that, look, yes, I, I'm one of those people. I acknowledge it's it's aberrant. It's, it's, it's completely volatile. The other thing I don't like is you can't eliminate it from history. It has no. to be there it has so that we can there. continue to fucking learn from it and and move away. Basically, it has to still be right here at this point in history so that we can continue to move farther the fuck away from yeah, it. This is, but this still is what we looking don't at do. it, but still getting away from it. And see, <clears throat> that, that I have a problem with a lot of people that act like the civil rights movement in the 60s didn't exist or shouldn't happen or now that it's over with dogs fire hoses okay. all that shit yeah, that's craziness you they know, burned like, down black communities and now those black communities are suffering they didn't just burn down black communities they burned down the leaders in those communities they lynch yep. the lawyers the bankers the politicians in those communities and now that that leadership and that <clears throat> mentorship is not there People say, well, y'all, why don't y'all have this and that? Because you burned it. Oh, yeah. Yep. See, I, I acknowledge that. Like, I'm a big proponent of history. And to this day, one of the most vile things, one of the most vile stories I've ever heard is uh, Emmett Tillman. Emmett Till. Till, yep. Oh, yeah. <sighs> On a lie. On a lie. On a lie. And that bitch admitted on her deathbed that she lied. Mm-hmm. 
Holy shit. And what? even if she didn't lie, all he did was whistle. I broke up a fight once between two guys who were going to fight because one of them was looking at the other one's girl. And how I broke it up was I just asked the dude this. I said, man, why are you friended? He was talking to my girl. I said, so let me ask you this question. What kind of girl do you want? A girl that's so hot that people want to talk to her and she says, I can't, I got a boyfriend? Or do you want a girl that's just going to talk to every dude and sleep with every dude? Or do you want some girl that no one finds attractive at all and you just... (laughs) You, and they actually look at you like, oof. All right, well, way to take one for the team, I guess. That's, <laughs> oof. Yep. <laughs> and he understood those, and the fight yeah. broke up just just for that. Man, I've always been that guy. Like, if I'm with a girl and she looks hot, I love to see people looking at her. Like that's yeah, and I'm that's like, you go awesome. get those free drinks, girl. Yes, I don't exactly, have to pay for exactly, your ass. <laughs> exactly. I'm a cheap motherfucker. You go flirt with that dude at the bar, and you get free drinks all night, and I'll come collect you later. Hey, babe, I would like a crown and sprite whenever the next one comes up. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you do it. That's exactly how you do it. Yes, you ride that train. <laughs> yep. You don't derail it. <laughs> but you gotta trust that chick that she is gonna. Well, and see, that's where I'm different than most guys. Like, I don't know, man. The jealousy thing—that's not really my thing. Like, well, yeah. If you if you want to be with me, cool. If you don't, I'll fuck your friends. I don't give a shit. (laughs) That's being single. That that's being that's being single. You know, that's what being single is all about. I meant like a serious girl. Like, no, but that's just. (laughs) I wasn't talking about jealousy. Even in a relationship, there there's always just that thing in the back of my mind of. If, she, if she's going to do something, I can't stop her. You know what I'm like? Right. That, that's people it. People are people. They're going to do what they want. Right. Right. And if they really... If they re- <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> calm down, noobsy. How yeah, calm you? down, noobsy. <laughs> we make know how sure, you got Dina. <laughs> make Thank sure you, slow gas knows, <laughs> Make sure everybody knows he said that and not me. <laughs> There's a lot of this, a lot of that on this show. That nub, Noobsy said that <laughs> <laughs> it was not me. <laughs> we need a he can be found on Facebook here. at. <laughs> so I was trying to make nobody mention my name because like John was going to be like Noobsy. Noobsy slow. I didn't say Nubsy. I said Noobsy. <laughs> you said that ain't me. But no, every time somebody says it, you say what? Okay, yeah, I'm here. Uh-huh. I'm so used to it now because that's what everybody else calls me. He now turns into running. Little John. What? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Noobsy, you know, they're like, man, I was trying to be quiet this I whole damn the, show. I, yeah, he do. He do. If he chimed in, <laughs> Big John was going to rip his ass up. I was wondering why you're being so damn quiet over there. <laughs> He, he hadn't even fumbled the English language today. He's just over there like, yeah, I'm here. No, don't. <laughs> don't don't get me wrong. There's a lot. I have a lot of respect, a lot of love for Chris. I do. And if he wouldn't, if he wasn't able to take it, and we didn't get along, I wouldn't do it. Oh, exactly. That's but like- because we're we're really good friends, I can do it. Have you heard any of the episodes when Torin and Corey come in? Here? Oh, Jesus. Mm-mm. Oh my God! It turns into how stereotypical can we become? Like, what's the most vicious stereotypes we can throw at each other? Everybody in the room, he's Mexican, half. He's always a half Mexican, half. and Fucking. then and then Torin's black, and Corey's like three times blacker than him, though. If we're going off of like cred, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And Corey sits her. Everyone tell their best black joke. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> It like, just turns into how that's inappropriate where, can that's we become? Where, how fast? That's yep. where the line is drawn. And, in the <laughs> but that's just it. Like, like you and I, mm-hmm. we're not cool like that in that aspect yet. But also, it's one of those. It's a different kind of respect. Like, of course, I respect Torn and Corey. But as soon as I met those dudes, I was just like, oh shit! I already know what this dynamic is going to be between all of us. And mm-hmm. then you, those are some. Ridiculous. I knew, I knew that this was just going to be a great conversation. It is, oh, yeah, it is, it has been a great conversation. I've truly enjoyed myself. Yeah, this has been a really good podcast. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, no, you know, back to the like the like what you said. Are you okay, man? No, man. I'll be, I'll be all right though. 
I just got this itch in my shoulder that I can't <laughs> scratch his back, new geek. <laughs> No, that's okay. That's kind of weird right yeah, now. Yeah, because I was like, if I don't scratch another man, I can't do it. He just get it out like a bear, you know, on the tree. <laughs> At first, I thought maybe your back was hurting or something. I was like, man, we need to we need to <clears throat> kick this out. We can. We only got like 15 minutes left. All right, cool. I'll suck it up <laughs> for the team. <laughs> but yeah, when you were talking about people, you know, acting like the civil rights movement didn't exist or didn't happen, I'm like, there are videos. We, what do you think those were made for TV movies? Like what? these are newscasts they say of people getting hosed in the streets and getting police dogs sicked on them. You know the dumbest thing they say about that. I heard this in 2016 from Fox News and all these conservatives. <laughs> we're the party of Martin Luther King because Martin Luther King was was. A Republican, that mm-hmm. is true. But Martin Luther King was a liberal. That's what they don't want to admit to. So just ask them, well, if you're proud of Martin Luther King for being a liberal, does that mean you agree with his socialist agenda? And they're like, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> then don't say you agree with Martin Luther King. See, and that's, a, that's another conversation that gets brought up a lot is the whole socialism aspect and... For whatever reason, everyone that talks about it can't grasp, okay, look, you can't have strict socialism and you can't not have some form of socialism. That's why conversations are important. And that's why you get groups of people to say, okay, well, maybe this will work, but this won't. So we have to figure out how to get everything together here and and make it a cohesive unit. That's because pragmatism in America is dead. You know, Ronald Reagan, one of his strongest attributes was he was pragmatic. He didn't get everything he wanted done, but he got, he was able to merge what he wanted done with what he could actually do. That's what, that's what made him a great president. I think his biggest gaffe was the Reaganomics issue. But mm-hmm. other than that, like, I think when you look at Reaganomics on paper, it was good intentions. And then all of a sudden, the wrong people were put in control of it. Mm-hmm. And and the road to hell is paved with the best intentions. But when you look at, when you actually look at Reagan and the majority of his two terms, I point to, like, I pointed out to people all the time. I'm like, if you look at the things that he pushed on both sides on both sides he pushed for he was if, if you're being honest about it that was the closest we've had to a libertarian president yeah um, the thing that <clears throat> I like Reagan for two reasons two obscure reasons in 1980 I was watching the news and Reagan was campaigning Reagan went to Harlem Yep. he went to Harlem and he the news is there recording him he gets out the van and Harlem residents were in his face pointing at him, what are you going to do for us? What are you going to do for us? And he tried to answer and he got so frustrated, he said, damn it, if you listen, I'm trying to tell you. And then they cut to when he was speaking. And then after he was speaking, they cut to when he was going back to his <clears throat> limousine. Those black people that were pointing their face were cheering and shaking his hand. Yep. And he said... Well, when I got here, they were doing, they were, they were, uh, they were jeering me. But then when I left, I was shaking hands. So I think I did some good today. He still didn't get the black vote, but he went there. He went to meet them. He went to state his case. And then I respected him for that. When the Iran-Contra thing came up, I compared the Iran-Contra to the Mueller investigation. Rand Contra came up. Reagan said, I had nothing to do with it. And he went about the business of being president. The Senate and the Congress got in, got, got hip <clears throat> deep in the investigation because they wanted to prove Reagan had something to do with it. Reagan kept being president, said, I had nothing to do with it. I had nothing to do with it. And then when it was over, they found he had nothing to do with it. 
He didn't even say, I told you. He said, now let's get about the country. Yeah, let's move on. And that's what happened. That's not happening with this president. Dude, Trump, Trump is a businessman. And he's a hell of a businessman. Mm. Trump, personally, <laughs> is a petulant child. Mm -hmm. Who cannot take criticism. And I'm sorry, but if you want to sit in the position that is of the highest criticism in the world... Every country criticizes the American president. Sometimes you you get positive criticism. Most times you get shit on. Mm -hmm. And if you can't navigate through that with some sort of grace. Like he's basically, Trump has shown how easy he is to troll. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is make fun of him for one thing. And he gets upset. Oh man, then you just keep. Yep. You just keep prodding him with it. Like just <laughs> See, the Trump and his supporters, they don't have a sense of humor. They don't. Every president <laughs> has been satired and made fun of. You can't do that with Trump. Dude, Obama and Bush made fun of themselves. Bill Clinton did. Dude, Bill Clinton knew when that sex thing came, with the blowjob thing came out. Mm -hmm. And once it was out in the open that, yes, he did do it. I mean, he cracked jokes. What else can you do? Dana Carvey did a Bush impression <laughs> on Saturday Night Live. And Bush made him do it for him. In public. In public. <laughs> yes! At the congressional Mr. dinner. Mr. Bush, this is Dana Carvey. Do the thing. Do the thing. <laughs> what? Do the thing. Dana Carvey said he was terrified. <laughs> yeah. And, and Bush wanted it, like, demanded Dana Carvey to do his impression of him. And when he did it, he laughed. <laughs> He, he didn't say, I don't like it. He laughed. He said, look, look, isn't that great? Isn't that great? That's great. Isn't it? Wouldn't I it be that. prudent at this juncture? <laughs> Dana Carvey was perfect. Oh, yeah. Dana, Dana Carvey was awesome. Like, he had him down. That's like the, uh, oh, there's another black comedian. I can't think of his name right now. Jay Farrell. That does the perfect Barack. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And when Obama saw it, he was just like, get out of here. Like, oh, God. And he wanted him, I, like uh, from a story I read, he wanted him to prank call his wife. Probably. He wanted him to prank Michelle. That's hilarious, That's dude. Hilarious. You're gonna, you are the president, and you find this comedian so funny that does an impression of you that you want him to troll your wife. Could you imagine that phone call? Like Barack sitting there in front of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sitting next to him. Now say this. This is what I call her. This is my pet name for her. <laughs> He'd be shitting his I pants. Did <laughs> I did that once with a girlfriend. <laughs> I was working with uh, Kevin. The I forget his last name, but he was in the the short guy in not Tom Cruise, but the other short guy in two in a, a few few good men. Um, he's a great impressionist, and she loved Columbo. She loved Peter Falk. <sighs> so I worked with him one week, and then the Sunday after the last show. I called her her work phone, and he did the perfect Columbo impression. And he just laid it down. He almost he said, "You want me to propose?" Nah, but he, <laughs> you should propose. You you should marry him. <laughs> and she was excited. That was Columbo. Colum Peter Falk called me. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> That's just you know what I think that that right there. <laughs> Just what we've talked about. That's what too much of society has lost track of and forgotten how to do is laugh at themselves. I would agree with that. I, I oh, really yeah. would agree with that. Not even not even having a sense of humor about the world around you. But if you can't look in the mirror and make yourself laugh mm -hmm. at your own stupidity, you're broken. And like it, you're you're beyond repair. Well, I think it's two things. I think it's that <clears throat> and not having respect for other people. Yeah, because yep. because that's lost too. That's, well, and it's like what we were talking about. People, it's really brave or really easy to be brave behind the screen. People do not give a shit about other people. They no. just don't mm -hmm. anymore. It's like it, we were it, raised to respect everyone. You know, it, until you're disrespected, you disrespect me. That's we're gonna have a real big my, problem. My grandfather fast. always said, "Be respectful until it's time <laughs> not to be." Right. That is, that is it. That is it. That is that is what's wrong. Now it's like we respect everybody <clears throat> who agrees with us. But if you don't agree with us, you're a piece of dirt and don't deserve to live. Yep. 
That's exactly what it is. Yep. So, yep. hey, you get to be a part of this, too. Fuck. We're, we, we, <laughs> we've, we've come to uh, the tail end of the show here, uh-huh. and each week we like to do what we call Nubsy's Flow. Now it's Noobsy's Flow. Yeah, Noobsy's Flow. Ready? And uh, so... I hope this is a good one. <laughs> Dad, I hope so, too. <laughs> your, your, mom's, your mom's listening. Yes. <laughs> Oh, she does listen to the podcast though. Does she really? Yeah, that's hilarious. Hello, hello, Mrs. Hayes. <laughs> I hope I didn't offend you. I tried to be nice. It's all your son's fault. I'm going to tell you right now. If she listens to this show. She's going to think this is the least offensive episode she that's has, ever happened. She has the best sense of humor. She has the best. She's got him as a son. She's got to be a saint. <laughs> like she, fuck. She, she friended me on Facebook, and I did the rare. The rare thing I did when she, when I saw her friend request, I wrote her, and I warned her. <laughs> I have to do that with everyone. That my page <laughs> is a lot of a lot of anti-Trump, a lot of liberal stuff. So if you don't want me to be your friend, I would understand. She's like, I'm good with it. Let's go, <laughs> and she's there. So All right. what do we got this week, Nubs? You know that song, Mississippi Girl. By uh, PayPal? No. Well, this is all based on that one. So. <laughs> Yo, this ain't nothing but hot bars. Uh, your boy. Because uh, there's any in a boy, don't just roll out of bed. Hey, you're... Hold on, pause. Hey. Hold on, pause. Okay, you're, it's, it, like, it's not working. Again. You're not plugged in. Oh, okay, now you... Now I you. heard it. Yeah. Yo, yeah. this ain't nothing but hot bars. Uh, your boy. Cause an like Indian a boy don't just roll out of bed <laughs> Say dad nabbing when they bump their head Ready to chase money talking sad dad bread And find a honey with an eagle to spread From the gutter call me never been court fed Only time fed corn when I wanted corn instead Marriage ain't my thing we ain't born to wed Get so much ass to make corns in my bed Love of my life nah baby you ain't gotta be my wife Looking for a girl that's like holding my shit. About to fight, later she holding my dick. As I empty my <laughs> pipes, everywhere I go, so they try to make noise. No matter where I end up, I'm still an Indiana boy. Cause the Indiana <laughs> boy is a boy. They dad nabbing when they bump their heads. Ready to chase money, talking sad dad bread. <laughs> Find a honey with the ego to spread. Big John just looks concerned. Yo, like I just know we ain't gonna do it all. And shawty, but first off, I got a powder on my phone. <laughs> I know it's changing. Those be the breaks. Everything's going and it's going so great. That's it. <laughs> God, this is one episode I wish the video cameras were going because the look of disappointment slash concern on not, Big I'm John's not, face. I'm not disappointed. It's just that uh, <laughs> I worry the about lyrics, the boy's mental health. The lyrics didn't match the rhythm, if that makes any sense. That's what you took away from that. I did. That's a- I did. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely tried to squeeze a few too many in there a few times. It, it just, it just, oh, <laughs> man. It just, it just didn't flow. Yeah. That wasn't oh, a good newbie God. flow. <laughs> I try to, oh, my I try face to put hurts. The, the clean, I'm smiling and laughing too much. I try to put the cleanest one on there for you, Vidra. No. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. That was clean? <laughs> We've been in the fight that, now. She's I'm holding gonna... my dick. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, this is the censored version. I appreciate everything you did, and I respect what you attempted to do. But, but... next time, don't bring the cleanest. Bring the best. Okay. <laughs> that one, ser- seriously, the <laughs> the pattern. You want to try to get some redemption flow... noobs? I know you got like thirty of them on there. Yeah. I don't know. You want to hear another one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yep. You got to get redemption. Big, big John. <laughs> big John was not impressed with that one. You got to get. You got to do better. Shit, boy, boy. <laughs> That's oh. fine. Ironically, I never heard this much energy out of him before. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we feel. He gets more hyped up when he's rapping into that phone, dude. <laughs> 
You ever talk to him? It's like, yo, Chris, what's up? All right. I'm good. You won the lottery, Chris? Yeah, I did. How much you win? Oh, uh, not much. A couple million. Yes. Yup. What happened for next week? Oh, good. I hope this is a, hope this is a better one. I will remind I, you. Yeah, yeah. It's not plugged in. Anonymous, your breath cologne. What is? Would you plug that thing in? You are lone bodies, known for some dumb hobbies. Trying to be Salazar, clone. Nope, sorry. (laughs) Trying to match wits with a raven claw when you're two loaves short of a full basket. That's some daft shit. The world knows your routine. Pup, pup, but like when you're in the classes, you can't pass shit. Leave your battle scarred and torn apart. Go While we in the like door Southern. getting half lit. Y'all too green. Not just talking about your house colors. Dislike half bloods. That's some Hulk Hogan shit, brothers. Sorry, once again, but even your head of house doesn't like you. He's undercover. In love with the mo- another. Lily Potter, the boy who lived mother. She was all muggle, but Snake was half like the ones you despise. How you believe a Snake when all they're known for is the lies? 50 points to Raven Claw. That was kind of cool. Again. Raven Claw. Uh, Raven Claw's revenge. <laughs> so, seriously, that's not real rap. That's more like freestyle, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's pretty. That's pretty good for freestyle. I thought you was trying to rap, and there be some music in there, and it, that that. But it's it's. That was better. Yeah, that one. That one. That was actually. Was actually pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> you were. You were like. You stayed on topic in that. Like. I'm, that's what you do. You always leave with your best. Period. No matter okay. what. <laughs> he said that Indiana boy shit gotta go. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing gangster about Indiana boys. Let's just, let's just be honest. That is the perfect jumping off point. <laughs> Big John, thank you so much for coming in man, today, man. it was an honor it was and a blast. pleasure. Yeah, it was fun. I am the king of villains, Bulldog Linko, along with Tucker. What up? Nubsy. It's your boy, boy. And Big John. I'm out, y'all. Thanks for having me. We'll be back next week. Later.